Top of the morning, guys, and welcome back to another very unorganized Project Time Garage. Back on Project F2 Hoopty again here, which is, like I always say, quickly becoming not a Hoopty. Today's goal, set of injectors. While we're in those injectors, or while we're in that deep, we're gonna take care of a set of glow plugs, and we're also gonna take care of the, uh, the under valve cover wiring harness assembly that always cracks and breaks and causes misfires and all kinds of terribleness to happen in these trucks. And then maybe that'll be fixed. Right now, this thing does not start when it's cold. I've tracked it down pretty quickly to the glow plug relay. The relay actually, you can hear it make, but the connection never actually happens. So you can take a screwdriver and strap across it and get glow plugs and start to try fine. But when it's cold outside, you ain't doing it with the key. So we got a glow plug relay on its way. If it shows up in time, we'll take care of that on this video too. Anyway, um, let's talk less and let's work more. Starting with injectors. Are you concerned with eye boogers? Subscribe to my channel. Probably won't help, but what do you got to lose? Also, while we got this truck apart, we're gonna go ahead and install uh, the, the big air filter. Do you have that, Chris? Can we see it? We're gonna show you. So this is the filter that we're gonna be putting on. It looks like a hand and the end of a robot arm, but it's really a filter. This is a Wix filter. Um, everybody in the world makes one. Um, some people even put pre-filters on them. I've never found a pre-filter necessary. Pre-filters work good in wet conditions or if you're getting a lot of water up there. I've got a few of these in play, not just on 7.3s, but in other applications. And on the 7.3 in particular, I've never even seen so much as a single splash anywhere remotely near this canister. So hashtag ain't worried about it. Um, Really, the only thing you need to install this is going to be this filter. And I'm going to leave a Amazon link right down below this video. So the person that says, hey, man, where'd you get this filter? Where's this at? I always get these comments. Where are you getting these? All you got to do, press the pause button. Don't stop the video now. If you want to watch the whole thing, pause it. Use your little scrolly wheel and scroll on down there. There's going to be like a read more in the description that says today we're putting blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of words and hieroglyphics. Scroll down and you're gonna see uh, links to products I use in the video. First thing there, it's gonna be this from Amazon. Second thing is gonna be the hose clamp for this on Amazon. Third thing, it's not gonna be quite this piece of PVC. This is just four inch PVC, uh, but for a nice metal four inch sleeve from Amazon. As far as what we're putting in here today, we've got the uh, under valve cover or the valve cover uh, gasket set with electrical pass through. Those are from Alliant, and there's your part number from Alliant, AP0014. Got the glow plugs. There's your part number on those, F4TZ-12A342-BA. Bet that BA is ex very expensive. That's the expensive part of the whole thing. These are Motocraft um, valve cover wiring or under the valve cover wiring harnesses for the injectors and uh, glow plugs. One for each side, L and R. <clears throat> There's part number on that. F81Z-9930-AB. dash dash And finally, we've got injectors. These are ADs. Um, I always try to make sure just in case something actually gets actually gets box strong. But anyway, we should have seven ADs and number eight gets an AE. There's our AE. That was a TSB from Ford slash Navistar back at some point in time. You can do some research and see what that whole injector cackle was all about. But that big boom, yeah, that was the uh, that was the hood closing itself. The truck, it's a little shy. It doesn't like to be worked on. So you kind of got to pry that mouth open to kind of, you know, get in there and work, right? Just doesn't like it. Kind of like me at the dentist. Look, we're already fixing stuff first thing this morning. All right, I'm going to, I'm not going to spend a lot of detail in this process. I'm going to show you everything we're doing, but I'm not going to explain it like I did in my other 7.3 red truck injector video that I've got out. Um, if you're interested in that, I'll link it somewhere up here above my head, maybe right in 
this area somewhere. Uh, it's uh, it's a full 7.3 injector swap. I believe the boy's Siri wants to get involved in this. And they say it's not listening to us. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, here's the overview of what's gonna happen first. This is just the prep work to get down to it. We're probably gonna do, are you gonna do the driver's side first? So we're going to do the driver's side first. It's mechanic's choice, honestly, like I told him. If it's your first time doing it and it's his first time doing this, it's it, a lot of times it's better to learn on the easier side. Um, the passenger side is a little more, there's just not as much room to work. It's the same exact procedure. It's just cramped quarters. Over here on the driver's side, once you get all the stuff out of the way, you, you can really open it up and have a lot of nice room for activities in there and it's easier to see what you're doing and you, you're going to do it four times you're going to kind of learn it and even on the front over here the front two aren't that bad on the passenger side so you're going to do six of them before you get to seven and eight and seven is bad and eight is a bastard just straight up it's a bastard uh anyway here's what we're doing i like to remove the battery and the uh the air intake the air filter housing box all this this is especially helpful anyway since we're putting the uh the new air filter in here and it's going to sit where this is but basically all this plastic stuff goes away. Once all that plastic stuff goes away, this is pretty much an open area. So you got lots of room to shove your elbows down in there and get your hands all beat up and tore up. At that point, this charge air pipe here is gonna go. And it's just basically uh, an outside band clamp up there and an outside band clamp down there. It pulls up, goes out of the way. This tube will get removed. Also, the pedestal that it mounts to will get removed. And that little elbow that goes all the way back to the turbo, that'll get removed. And at that point, it's a clear open shot. You can see the entire valve cover. It's like as wide open as you could possibly imagine. Easy to get wrenches in there, easy to see. That side, pretty much just a pleasure to do. Other side, not so much. At least for me, I got big fat hands and you know. So anyway, put you up, we'll go to work. That thing unplugged, got the back bolt out, which were real big pain in the butt. Um, but really, all we gotta do now left is just lift this thing off. And and there's the injectors. Now, I got the four bolts out that hold the injector down. We're pulling the uh, plug out of the oil rail at this point, and we're gonna let that oil kind of drain down there. There's one on the front, and there's one back there on the rear, and we'll go ahead and pull them both out. Those are Allen heads. I'll show them to you here. They look like that, and they're just little plugs with O-rings on them. The reason we pull those out is because that is the up here on the top. See how it's pouring now, gushing oil out of it? Because now we've, we've unhooked both of them, and it can get air in the system and it's dumping it all out. Plus we have the nose of the truck forward. We have the nose of the truck on the ground there. Uh, our lift is lifted up one notch in the back. It's not necessary, it just makes it a little easier to, to do work on it. But here's the thing. Notice we're still gushing oil like crazy. It's pouring out. There's a lot of oil in that big log that goes up across the top. That's the high pressure rail. If we don't do this, this step in the procedure and drain that, whenever we pull the injectors out, all the oil that is in that log drains down into the cylinders. Well, we know that oil doesn't compress, so we have to evacuate those cylinders and get all the oil out 
before we ever try to start the truck or we'll just bend rods and trash the motor, it's done. So um, the procedure will be, in case I forget to mention it, pull the plugs, leave them out. We'll replace each of the injectors. We'll pull all of the glow plugs out and we'll stop with the new injectors in and all the glow plugs out of the motor. At that point, we'll get in here, we'll turn the key on, and we'll spin the engine over a few times. And doing that, we'll actually blow all that oil out of the cylinders, because you gotta think it's a diesel, there's a whole lot of compression down there. So it'll blow all that oil out. Uh, probably should cover the area with a towel or something, otherwise you'll have oil all over you and your partner and your opponent and everybody else. But uh, that'll evacuate the cylinders. At that point, we can go ahead and put our glow plugs back in it and go back together with the side. And that side is done and reasonably you know, happy and we're sure it's right. So still draining. Also keep in mind this. When we start the truck, the truck back, when we're all done with this, we have to turn the engine over enough so that the low pressure oil pump can fill up the reservoir on the high pressure oil pump and it can fill up both of those oil logs. That takes some time. So this truck is going to turn over for probably... 30 or 40 days, well, probably not that long, but a while, a long time. Just before you think the truck's not gonna start, it'll just light up. It's usually right about the time you're second guessing, did I plug the injectors back up or didn't I? <laughs> anyway, all right, we'll let this drain, be back to see you in a minute. All right, Speedy Gonzalez here is ahead of me, but we're about to pull some injectors out of the truck and I'll show you how that works. Idea is just to get under that collar and pry them up. After that, we can just lift them right out of the engine. They're dirty. Pretty. Isn't that pretty? All right. Knee glove now. As you pull these injectors, make sure on the end of them here, there's this little brass uh, washer. That make sure that that brass washer is on here when you pull the injector. If it's not, that means it's down in the engine or sitting on top of the injector cup and that means you need to go get it. Uh, in other words, don't screw up and not check and end up putting two of those, you know, stacked on top of each other. Next thing we're gonna do is get these glow plugs out. They're right there, buried in the oil. Peru, Ireland, 37S. Hmm. Those may have been replaced. I don't know. He's going to get the rest of those glow plugs out, and I'm going to show you how you test them. If you want to test your glow plugs just to see if they work or not while they're out of the truck, all you need is a battery box. Here's how you do it. Take the negative lead, clamp it right on the body of the glow plug, like that. Take the positive lead, and clip it to the very end, like this. And watch it. See, that glow plug is in good shape. See how red it is? And there we go. One definitely good glow plug, but we're gonna replace them anyway because they've probably been there a while. I'm gonna go ahead and test the rest of these real quick. And we'll just see if any of them have a fault or not. It's interesting to mention that of all of these trucks I've torn apart, I've always tested the glow plugs and I've yet to find one that wasn't good. No orange. There it goes. Ooh. Well, that's a good set of it's a good set of glow plugs. Good. All right. We know they work. Next order of business, we're going to get all the injectors, the new ones, oiled up and seated in the engine. On your new injector, two things. This right here is a little rubber protective cap. Pull that off. Don't put it in the truck with that on there. Other thing is, that little uh, brass or that little uh, copper washer, make sure that's there. Make sure it doesn't fall off. Make sure that it is happy make sure that you don't talk mean to it make sure of a lot of things be nice to it it'll be nice to you 
the old injector, I'm just gonna put this back on there. Uh, just roll it up in bubble wrap and put it right back in the box the new injector came with because these go back to full force as cores. Uh, thought I'll mention it, these, these, we got these from full force diesel. Um, <clears throat> I've not had any issues at all with any of the full force stuff. Uh, they're in my area, so it makes life really, really good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Rotella. I'm gonna pour it in my assistant's hands. Yep. And he is going to, let's say, gob it all over this. Now, you see how when I pick this thing up, see how this little washer wants to fall off? You don't want that. It must go down and it must sit on top of the injector cup like so. All right, let's get to making a mess of you. Hold out your hands, sir. I'm trying to get too much. We'll just, just enough to do that. Your idea is to just basically... The reason we're doing this is because these O-rings, you don't want them to tear when you're putting them in. So you want to kind of be ginger and gentle and give them every opportunity to seat that you possibly, possibly can. Okay. I'll give you the injector. At this point, we're just going to set the injectors in. We're not going to seat them home. Yeah, we're going to seat them home. I'm scared of that crush washer. It's like a spaceship, doesn't it? Three, two, one. <laughs> All right. We want to beat on it until the little collar will slide under the under the um, the bolt there. Slide under it. Yeah. Almost there, and it's moving more every time, isn't it? Well, can you see it? And, uh, it's not quite there. See, you can see it right there. Give right. me a rubber mouth. Ah, uh, that wouldn't go hitting on them. Wouldn't go hitting on them. Well, well, your hand's much softer. Um, there we go. There we go. All right. So once that once that keeper has seated, you grab your five eighths wrench. I use a stubby. You just hook on the back side of that retainer and push down. It just gives you a little bit of leverage. That's all it does. This way or this uh, way? that way right there. Hook on it and just push down. Just a little bit. Yeah, it'll take much. Uh, yeah. All right, there's that one. We'll continue on doing uh, uh, number six and number eight. Keep in mind here two things. Number one, that number eight doesn't get the same injector. All right, it gets the AE injector. And also keep in mind that we still have the glow plugs out of the truck at this point. All right, we're not going to put them back in until after we get the injectors in, put in, injector exhaust ports put on, torque down, all happy. We'll spin the motor over. It'll blow oil out where the glow plugs used to be because that hole's right inside the cylinder of the combustion chamber. It'll blow oil out there. That's how we evacuate the oil out of the cylinder and save our motor. Then we'll put the glow plugs back on and go back together with the harness and all that garbage. So hang tight. We've got our injectors back in it and we've got them torqued down. We've got the injector exhaust ports on it and torqued down. No, I don't give torque specs on videos. They're easy to find. Lots of liability involved there. Anyway. We're gonna go ahead and put the uh, valve cover back on it. Notice we just set it on there. We didn't do anything with bolts because we're not done under there yet. At this point, we still don't have glow plugs in it. Remember that. We're gonna roll it over and that hopefully will blow some of that garbage out of there. And um, we can go back together with it. Whenever you're ready, you don't even have to let it glow. It ain't hooked up. All right, oh, that's it. Good. There. That should be that. All right, we're evacuated, and at this point, we can go back together with a valve cover gasket and the um, 
the little connector thingy my bobbers so let's do that all right we have our our valve cover gasket and our um wiring harness assembly put together and everything is ready to lay back on top of the engine all right and this guy just sits right back up on top of there and oh those wires are just wonderful um everything's hooked up that's all good back together we go i'm not going to make you sit through this because it's about as boring as watching paint dry so be back when that's done fixing our battery the right way all right we're back together everything except the uh, air intake system which we're, we're going to do some work on he's going to start uh turning this motor over and we're going to try to get it to light but it's going to take a while it's just going to take a while all there is to it it's going to take a lot of turning So we've got the uh, the driver's side put back together. It runs, it looks good. As you can see, looks like that. So we got the passenger side button back up in and we've started the truck, it's all good, it works now. Um, we're gonna move over and do the driver's side or the passenger side. It's gonna be a little bit more of a pain. Let me give you a brief overview of what we're gonna do um, and then I'll get you set up so you can watch. Obviously, we're going to unhook the batteries, but this battery is going to come out of the truck. We'll just sit it in the floor and get rid of it. After that, we'll go ahead and get this charge air tube. We'll get it pulled. It's got a band clamp down there and a band clamp up there. It just pulls and rolls out kind of like the other one does. Now, once that's out of the way, we're going to go ahead and unhook the, the uh, air conditioning compressor. It's just got four bolts here and then this plug here we'll basically take this thing and pick it up and we're going to just roll it over and lay it right down here where the battery was because the battery is going to be gone remember at that point um we'll take this bracket off and go ahead and get it out of our way um just because it's you know it's kind of in our way and at that point that's it's really all that we're going to take off in order to get down to that valve cover you have pretty good access to it at that point the only thing about this this that's a real chore is this uh this air box right here is it's just right in the way it kind of protrudes over the valve cover especially back there in the back a little bit it just makes it kind of tough to get to it's not any harder and it's exactly the same procedure as the as the driver's side was it's just not quite as accessible it's fiddly and there's no room to get your hands in, in places as easily but very much doable if you're thinking about doing this for yourself do it just do it it's not that bad of a job uh, okay, I'll shut up, put you up there on the hood, let you watch.
Okay, we're to the point of pulling the oil plugs out of the rail on this side. Here's our out of the truck. I've been working really hard on it. I haven't done much actually. And there are the old injectors. And we'll get ready to go back in with the new ones here. Uno momento. Injectors are back in. And um, we've evacuated the cylinders. Our oil drain plugs are back in it. Um, we've got the glow plugs back in it. And we're just about to sit on the uh, undercover valve cover for the about to sit on the valve cover gasket and harness. After that, it'll just be a short trip to start the truck. All right, we have it back together. Everything here is pretty well done up. Only thing we've got left to do is set this battery back in it, hook it up, but all this stuff is done. We are gonna, um, we're gonna go ahead and take care of this filter now. And I'll say this again, if you're looking for this filter, if you're like, Dude, where did, where did you get this? Where can I get this? I addressed that in the beginning of the video and I'll address it again. Pause the video, scroll down. Read the description of this video. There will be a link to this. There will be a link to this union and there will be a link to the hose clamps. And that's really all you need. Basically, that fits in there like that. And this end fits in your factory hose. That's it. That's all there is to the whole kit and caboodle. Let's watch the man install it. See, that filter is going to fit right back into your factory location. All right, we've got our, our four inch union. I'm going to use the factory uh, hose clamp for that. Next, we'll put our filter on there. Yeah. And that's going to go right back in the factory location. There we go. All right, and there is the Wix filter. Yeah in place of the factory air box. Might I suggest if you do this modification on your truck, if you have the factory air box, please keep it. Please put it away, don't pitch it. Because at some point, somebody down the road might have your truck and want to return it to stock and it sure is nice to keep that original stuff with a truck. Also, do the same with your floor mats. Don't throw them away, don't get them lost. Hang on to those things. Every time I buy a used truck, it's missing key fobs, floor mats, and weird stuff like that. I always like to see that stuff kept up with. But anyway, rant over. Let's uh, let's get the truck started and see how our injector job did. It's going to smoke for a while, but that's to be expected. And it's going to be hard to start. That's to be expected as well. All right. Let's see if we can get this thing started up. It's going to take a while. Well, we failed. The truck didn't start. We worked on it for, I don't know, gosh, probably 45 minutes or so before I finally hooked up uh, the Forescan app just to see what was going on. Turns out it's not building enough high pressure oil to start. Um, it, it maxes out around 210 PSI, and that's not enough. I think it needs to be 
I don't know, four or 500 range to get the thing to actually start up. The other thing that was interesting was it was taking um, like 45 seconds of cranking even to get that 210 PSI. So that tells me there's a massive leak somewhere in the uh, in the oiling system. Now, I'm gonna let you guys take your, your best guesses on what's wrong. Down there in the comments, what do you think? Here's what I know. I know the oil drain plugs are back in there and tight. He put them in, I watched him, and I checked the torque on them myself. So I know they're in there. I know the injectors are installed and seated and torqued. So one of, one of a couple of things, either the high pressure oil pump just spontaneously decided to go bad while we were changing the, the, the injectors. That's not likely. The other thing might be that, uh, I don't know, maybe it spit out one of those plugs. Maybe it blew it out of there. I, I don't know, I doubt it. Or maybe we have an injector that's bypassing, but that would be a serious injector bypass. I mean, I can't imagine where that much oil is going. Um, we, we checked the truck when we first brought it home and during cranking, the thing would shoot up to, you know, 900, 1,000 pounds, no problem. Every indication is that the high pressure oil pump is fantastic in the truck. I don't know. So I'm gonna end this video here uh, because we're gonna work on this some next week and I'd like to get this video out here and see what you guys think about it, what you think's wrong. So yeah, drop me a comment down there below and let me, you know, let me know what you think. This is the first time that this has ever happened to me. I've done, I've done a bunch of these now and I've not had one fail to start, fail to make high pressure um, after going back together. So be interested to hear what the, uh, what the community has to think. I know there's some guys out there that are really, really good um, at these things. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. Thanks for taking the time. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends about us and guys, I'll see you next time.